Hola, y'all. It's been a really good day. Um, got a lot accomplished today, and I'm very hot and sweaty because I just did my run and my workout. I got some of my routine things out of order today, so <laughs> we have company. They just came in. Come on, Marley. There's Marley. He runs with me now. Um, we're taking a bath. He's getting a bath tonight. So I told him he could walk with me because I didn't want him to get sweaty on a nine bath day. Anyway, um, oh, I was going to say something to you and I forgot. So I'm just going to jump into it. So I saw this thing. I actually saw two things today that are really, come on, Marley, that really resonated with me. But I chose to go this direction. I'll probably talk about the other one later. Um, and they both go along with things that I've been talking about this week. And I was listening to this man who was a Navy SEAL talk about one of his instructors. And the parallels here, guys, was it was just too many things in common. So I was like, I have to bring it to the people. It's a great lesson. He said... He had this really well-known Navy SEAL instructor, and he said most Navy SEAL instructors are not known for being very kind. You know, they're rude, they're mean, they holler, they cuss, they do whatever. He said, but this guy was a legend. He was really well-known, and he was known for saying things like, and I wrote down some stuff. He said, I'm not here to intimidate you. I'm here to motivate you. I know you've probably seen the movies about the Navy SEALs and training, and I know you probably read all the books, he said, but... Regardless of what you've been told, this course is not impossible. Look at me. I'm living proof. Because obviously he'd already been through it. He said, I will never ask you to do anything that is impossible. But what I will ask you to do, or I will make you do hard things. Followed by more hard things. And then I'm going to make you do hard things after that, followed by more hard things. He said, but, and I'm going to do that to you day after day after day for eight months. Of course, this is Navy SEAL training. Just uh, stay with me. I'm going somewhere. He said, but don't think about that because that's not how you achieve a long-term goal. You do not think of it that way. You don't look at the eight month picture. That's not how you will make it through this course. He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to wake up every morning on time. I want you to make your bed and I want you to brush your teeth. He said right there, the beginning of your day, do those three things, wake up on time, make your bed perfectly and brush your teeth. He said, you've got three wins every day. You're starting out on the right foot. You've got three victories every single day right there. He said, and then after that, all I want you to do is try to make it to breakfast. There's going to be events in between brushing your teeth and breakfast. He said, there's going to be times, of course, Navy, Navy still training. He said, there's going to be times when I'm beating you. There's going to be times when you're doing really hard tasks. He said, but don't think about it. Your only goal at that moment is to make it to breakfast. And he said, once you make it to breakfast, then your next goal is to make it to lunch. And after you've made it to lunch, your very next goal is to make it to dinner. And once you've survived all the way to dinner, your next goal is to make it back to that freshly, perfectly made bed that you took time to do that morning. And he said, tomorrow is a clean slate. It's a new day. You get a fresh start. And when you feel like quitting, don't quit now. He said, because that's pure emotion. Quit tomorrow. And as long as you can keep quitting tomorrow, you can do anything in life. And if that's not a motivating speech, I don't know what is. And what he did there was he related to his men. He didn't put himself way above those men. He let them know, hey, it's going to be hard, but it's going to be possible. It's going to be worth it. And I'm not gonna ask you to do anything impossible. I'm gonna ask you things that are very, very hard, but I know that you can do them. So you're not starting out on a task that you're just in, it's impossible to achieve. And he said, you don't look at the big picture in order to accomplish incredibly hard goals or tasks. That's not how you do it. You will give up. 
And so I wanted to take his framework and I wanted to say something to you. I'm your instructor <laughs> on your walk with God, at least in this space. I'm not here to intimidate you. I'm here to motivate you. And I don't care, or I know that you've probably seen Passion of the Christ or The Chosen or other um, plays or movies about biblical events. I'm sure that you have read Bible characters like David and Goliath and Jonah and the whale and Moses and the Red Sea. And I know that you've probably seen the fall of Judas or watched the the sad demise of Solomon, or maybe you remember Saul Paul and how he was delivered from false doctrine to to go and and build churches all over Asia. And maybe you can think about the amazing thing that Peter was found cursing and denying Jesus, but eventually given the keys to the kingdom and preached the gospel message in Acts 2.38 on the day of Pentecost. And maybe you're looking at Isaiah and Ezekiel, and maybe you're looking at the prophets Elijah and Elisha, and, and maybe you're looking at Mary, the mother of Jesus, and you're thinking, you've read the books, and the things they have done seem impossible, that you're not them, you're not a David, you're not a Saul, you're not a Solomon, you you couldn't possibly be a Paul, and that's what you think in your mind, and you and you put them up and you elevate them because you've read the books. But I'm here to remind you that God is never going to ask you to do the impossible, because with Him all things are possible. He's never going to put things on you that you are not able to bear. Let me find my dog. But he is, and I'm going to change this a little bit. I found the dog. The Navy SEAL instructor is trying to get these men ready for rescue missions and combat going into really dangerous territory, which, by the way, that's what we do. That's what we do. Rescue missions, combat, going into really dangerous spiritual territory. But by hard... This Navy SEAL instructor said, I'm going to make you do hard things and I'm going to make you do something else hard and make you do something else hard and make you do something else hard. I want to turn that. I just want to turn that just a little bit. And I want to say discipline. Because discipline, consistency and discipline, I think is what's going to make the biggest difference for us, for you and me. So I'm not going to teach you something that is impossible and can't be done. That just sounds really good, looks really good on paper, but it's not logistical and it's not really possible. And then you feel terrible because you think, oh, I can't do that. I'm, I'm not here to do that. And that's, Jesus is not here to do that. And the word of God is not here to do that. It's not impossible, but it will require some discipline. Okay. And I don't want you to think about, this is discipline that we will apply to our lives, the rest of our lives. But just like this instructor said, we're not going to look at it like that because sometimes when you want it, well, when you want to achieve long-term goals, you do not look at that really, really, really huge picture. He broke it down for these men because he knew how difficult that sometimes it was going to be. And he broke it down into manageable steps, which by the way, I'm a teacher. That's how you break down all pieces of information. That's, I mean, it doesn't even matter if you're teaching math and English, Spanish, geometry, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the best way to do that is by the chunking method or blocking method, which is, you know, building steps. You just give people digestible amounts of information at a time, let them get a good handle and a grasp upon those small amounts of information, and then you can build upon, to, upon that. You don't lay the entire foundation on them at once. You don't give them every single formula in geometry for all the angles on the same day. I don't give every single conjugation for Spanish verbs in one week. It would be overwhelming. It would, and, and literally your students would go, I can't do that. I quit because you would just be laying like 2000 bricks on their brain of information. It's the exact same thing. And so that's what he was telling his men. And that's what I'm telling you. We're not going to look at that long-term goal so that we don't get discouraged. If it discourages you, we're not going to look at that. We're going to do this one day at a time. By the way, I'm tiling this quit tomorrow. And I know that sounds like, what? You're telling people to quit? Well, I hope you understood what the Navy SEAL instructor was saying, but I'll tell you at the end, if you don't 
but we're going to wake up. He gave them three things to do when they wake up. And I'm going to challenge you as well. We're fixing to get back into major routines. Kids are going back to school. I'm starting my new job at the house. I have a routine, but like today, it kind of got out of whack. And so I just ran and worked out a while ago. And I would normally do that in the morning. And I, I've got to go read. So I haven't done that yet. But I've done other things. So, but it's important to get it in. If it gets messed up, just make sure you get it in. Uh, but it's, it's incredibly important to try to set a schedule and have discipline. It's the small wins that are going to build your confidence. This is going to build your confidence in faith and your faith. Okay, in your walk with God. He said, wake up on time, make your bed, brush your teeth. All right, obviously, I'm not going to tell you to make your bed and brush your teeth. That's on you. He was speaking of small victories that everyone's capable of doing first thing in the morning. But he said, wake up on time. So, personally, I'm waking up early. I wake up early. But I'm waking up early at the same time with an alarm. That's goal number one, okay? Remember, um, everybody's times are different. I'm not telling you to get up at the crack of dawn. I'm not telling you to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning or 6 or even 7. I'm not telling you what time to get up. That is none of my business. That is a personal choice. That is none of my business. I don't care what time you get up. But get up in whatever time you get up. Just make sure that in your life, whatever that looks like, that you have time to spend some time with the Lord alone. Because... Once, he, once those kids get up, y'all, and even spouses, it's hard because you need to have some private time with them, okay? So wake up on time, whatever on time is for you. Make it a schedule. Number two, he said, make your bed perfectly. I'm going to say, go pray. That's what I would say, go pray. Number three, he said, brush your teeth. And I would say, read the Bible, okay? Three small victories, but really those are not small Y'all, those are um, actually in our spiritual walk and our in our walk with the Lord. Those are really big victories. Those are major defeats of flesh. Like that's defeating the flesh majorly. Getting up when you don't really want to get out of bed, submitting to the Lord, and spending time with Him when the flesh would rather do other things, and then reading His Word because it's just impossible. I think at some level to read God's Word and not be changed, especially after talking to Him. He opens your heart. Okay, and then your next goal is to make it to breakfast. Now, I know you might say, well, that's, that's silly. We're not in Navy SEAL training. Well, this is what I mean. You know, yesterday I talked about that sinful nature. Some people have a much harder time than others. Some of us have been living for God 20, 25 years. We still have problems. We still have flesh. But some battles you've licked. Some, I mean, they, you just have, okay? My journey from reading and praying in the morning to breakfast may not be that taxing, but what about a person who's trying to overcome addiction of some sort? That, that three hour stretch is gonna be really long. How many times in that three hours are they gonna be tempted by their, their flesh or the enemy to get something to drink? How many times are they gonna be tempted to, to get a cigarette? How many times are they gonna be tempted to do cocaine or meth? How many times are they gonna be tempted to indulge in pornography or sexual sin. How? We don't know. But the enemy, is, is he's roaming around, y'all. So it's going to happen. So your next goal is to make it to breakfast. Make it to breakfast. And by make it to breakfast, I mean praying, talking to the Lord, going about your business, rejecting the evil thoughts that come in your mind, just, just trying to live a peaceful, pure life. Okay, then after you make it to breakfast, your next goal is to make it to lunch. And after you make it to lunch, I want you to make it to dinner. And then after you make it to dinner, I want you to make it to that bed. Now, it's funny because think about when you're losing weight, man. Those nighttime cravings hit. A lot of people want to go get something sweet. Well, I can tell you, I heard a phrase and I do believe it, that nothing good happens after, everybody slaps a different time on it. Nothing good happens after midnight. Very, probably very true. Nothing good happens after 10. I don't know because some of us stay up. Well, I don't stay up late, but 10's a little early for some people. But we'll use the phrase, nothing good happens after midnight. There's something about when nighttime comes. And guys, it's not just what we eat and cravings like that. You stay up long enough. And, and if you're battling in any department, sexual sin, 
um, food, <laughs> if you're battling food, uh, addiction, um, whatever it is that you're battling, impure thoughts, or um, it just gets harder as the day goes on. Like, the longer you're awake, <laughs> the more um, the more hours you have to battle that. So, get in bed at a reasonable hour because remember, you need to wake up the next morning. So, your next goal from dinner is to get into bed and not fall into temptation because it, it does seem to, to happen. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to go. I'll tell you this. Somebody was telling me their testimony of the day. This is totally anonymous. And they said, this is how that phrase got brought up. They said, I was at a party in a place I wouldn't normally be, but I did not participate in any of the activities. And I was there for hours. And they said, at some point, I had been there way past midnight. And the longer I stayed, the harder it got not to participate. Because at that point, everybody had been participating and I was the only one. And I'd stayed so long that I said, you know what? Forget it. Give it to me. I'll do it. And, and, and that's the point. They overstayed, first of all. And second of all, they were in a place they should never been a, been at in the, first, in the first place. When they arrived, things were happening that were not supposed to be happening. But the longer they stayed, it just wore on them. Okay? And then I love what he says, and I'm going to end with this. There might be times when we feel like quitting, okay? Don't let anybody else, don't let anyone make you feel like a horrible person if you've ever thought about quitting. Now, I've thought about quitting things. I've never thought about leaving God. Um, some things just get difficult, okay? Just know that, I mean, you're human and it just happens. It happens to all of us. But when you think about quitting, don't quit right then because that's emotion and we don't make decisions on emotion right? Quit tomorrow. And when you wake up in the morning, it's a new day. Start over, get your three victories in and you can't quit because tomorrow's not there. It's the next day. It's now today. And so if you'll just keep quitting tomorrow, your walk with God, you can make it. And I kind of hate to say that with our walks with God, because I don't really ever want to think of it that way. I know what he meant, but um, living for God is a joy to me, even when I don't do it well. Even when I'm not doing great at it, there's no other life I'd rather live, and I hope you feel the same way. And if you don't, for various reasons, I can understand that too, but I hope to motivate you to get to a place where you do feel that way. So, quit tomorrow, and remember, tomorrow never comes. See you tomorrow. I'll wait for you.